Hey everyone, Mike from Fortinet Guru here. This video will be a short clip that explains how to go about configuring OSPF. Um, this is going to be a really basic deployment, so it's not going to, you know, use any ACLs or anything like that. We're just going to pick a network and pick an interface that we want to broadcast our networks across. So um, I have a FortiGate 100D. I have it VDOM'd off into two routers, quote unquote routers, uh, router one and router two. Uh, router one has ports one and two. Router two has ports three and four. And just so you know, this is the general layout of the two devices. So router one has a WAN IP of 172.16.28.10 with two networks behind this device, um, 192.168.0.1 and 1.1. And then of course router 2 has the one IP of 172.16.28.20 with network A and B being 10.0.10.1 and 10.0.15.1, those um, slash 24s. Obviously, um, you can kind of see where I'm going with this. We are going to broadcast OSPF across the WAN IPs in this particular situation. Um, so, first things first, you look at router one. You know, our WAN interface is the 28.10 address, and we have the two networks here. These are the two networks that we want to broadcast to the other side. So, these are the ones in question. And then, of course, router two, you have the same setup, just different networks. So first things first, you're going to want to go into networking. I'm going to start off on router 1, and you'll go to OSPF. Now, the router ID, you usually want to tie this to something that's related to the device. I like to start with 1.1.1.1 for router 1, and then 1.1.1.2 for router 2. Um, you don't have to be super picky. but um, I do suggest that you do not use IP addresses here because it's easy to get confused at what you're actually looking at if you're digging through CLI or anything like that. So, um, But we're here. The networks that I'm going to be interested in broadcasting will be my connected ones and we'll just use the default metric of 10 here. So click apply. Now, <clears throat> as mentioned, this is going to be a very, very basic OSPF um, deployment. So the only thing we're really worried about is setting up our backbone area. Your backbone area is quad zero. That's how it works in OSPF. Anything referenced as quad zero, as far as an area is concerned, will be considered your your backbone network. Um, it's going to be a regular type. We're not going to do stub or NSSA. Um, I'll go into detail on these in future videos and we're not going to do any kind of authentication like I said plain Jane we don't care click OK alright so networks this is the network that you want to broadcast your OSPF over so we're going to be broadcasting it over the WAN interfaces which as previously mentioned will be the 172.16.28.0/24 subnet um, so go ahead and set that and then of course the interfaces that's going to be tied to it um, as you can see I've already run through this <clears throat> so these settings here name you can name this whatever you want this is just the alias that you associate with the port that you're going to be broadcasting OSPF signals over um, on router 1, port 1 is the port that we will use. Network 1 and network 2 are my, my two subnets that are behind the device. And then, of course, port 2 is the port that these two VLANs are hanging off of. Um, you don't have to enter an IP here. You can leave that as is. Uh, I like to leave the default hello and dead intervals um, for basic configurations because you don't really have to dig that deep for anything. So, just rehash. I'm going to distribute my connected networks, which will be um, the 192 subnets on this particular router. 
Um, no default information, and we're going to set the router ID to 1. Our backbone network, the network we wish to broadcast over, and the interface that we wish to broadcast over. All is good. Jump over to router 2. We're going to do the same configuration, basically. Um, obviously, we're going to change the router ID. Like I said, I like to use dot two. Of course, I'm going to do my connected metrics there, or connected networks there with a default metric. I'm going to create the backbone over here as well. Regular, no authentication. These things have to match, or else you'll have communication issues. Um, it's going to broadcast over the same network because they are on the same subnet. And then, of course, I'm going to create another interface, or I'm going to associate another interface with what I want to broadcast over. So these two devices basically mirror each other. The only difference being that they have different subnets behind them. Their WAN IP is different, though they are on the same subnet, and the router ID is different. So if we jump in here, And of course, I have a management IP set up on this, obviously, for demo purposes. Um, so we're in the device. We can go to config VDOM. You won't have to go into config VDOM normally. This is the only reason why I'm having to do that is because this is a 100D that's you know partitioned off. I'm going to edit router 1, and then you can get router. Info, routing table, all. Now this is cool. As you can see, this is router 1. The O, whenever you do a, a get router info routing table all, basically this command just shows you the active routing table that your device is utilizing now. Um, anything that has an O next to it, was learned over OSPF. So as you can see, these two subnets are the 10.0 networks that were on router 2. <clears throat> Basically what this says is, is via OSPF, 10.0.10.0/24 with default OSPF metrics was learned via 172.16.28.20. That's router 2 over port 1. And then of course if you in here jump over to the other router oh, helps if I type the right command. If you type it here you can see that the two TIN networks are connected. Obviously, they're local to this device. The two networks we learned over OSPF are the two devices that are, or the two networks that are on the other router. And of course, the neighbor is dot ten. So that's cool. That means these devices know of each other. You don't have to go through and do manual static routes or anything like that to really see what you need to do. Um, so this is how you do it. You know if the particular interface happens to be on the same subnet. A lot of times this isn't the case if you have um, site to site VPNs or something like that going on. So what we have here for your network and your interfaces, you would just change that to the appropriate setting. So <clears throat> if you had, let's say you had an IPsec network between these two devices, whatever your point to point your slash 30 network would be you would plug that here and then for your interface you would just choose the interface tied to the VPN otherwise everything else would remain the same and it would still pass, pass the information across so that is how you do a basic OSPF um, deployment I know I'm not the best at explaining things step by step so if you have any questions please don't hesitate to comment um, otherwise you know just walking through this video you should be able to set up 
rudimentary OSPF routing, which will help remove, prevent you from having to enter a cluster of static routes, which, let's face it, that's, that's no good. So, and this is what it looks like through the OSPF monitor. I mean, a routing monitor. So, and of course, you know, if you had, let's say you were using 40 gates for routers instead of just letting them be firewalls, you could, you know, you have a subnet full of 200 different devices all sharing OSPF. Boom. No need for static routes. None of that jazz. Makes it awesome. A lot more streamlined, a lot better to use than having to dig through and do a whole bunch of statics. So hopefully this helped you. If not, please don't hesitate to ask questions, and thanks for tuning in.